phone call that I got at my office from from uh, Brian Daughtry. He's with the Potomac Valley chapter of RGS, and he, he called up one afternoon and said, "Hey, you know, Ken, I'm Brian, and uh, uh, he was asking about McKee Bashir. Said he's an active member of the Potomac Valley chapter, and said that uh, he'd been talking among the chapter members, and there was a he said that there was some interest uh, to see if anything could be done specifically for um, uh, woodcock habitat management on on McKee Bashirs." So, so we talked for a while, and you know, and I listened, and I said, well, you know, I said it's been my understanding that that you know over the years that uh, uh, that McKee Bashir's management area itself has been known for its for its you know seasonal populations of of woodcock on the property, and I thought, well, look, you know, that this might be a good idea, something uh, uh, something we may be interested in doing. So at that point, you know, we spoke, and I said, well, look, you know, kind of let me uh, let me talk with the staff about this, and I had some follow-up conversations with um, with Bill Harvey and, and Bob Long about it, and we thought, hey, you know, that this sounds like a good idea. It would it'd be a good cooperative venture uh, between the Wildlife and Heritage Service and the uh, and the Rough Grouse Society. So with that, go ahead, uh, Jonathan, and bump to the next. All right, so here's a McKee, here's a McKee Beshears Wildlife Management Area. As I said, uh, it's about 2,000 acres right on the Potomac River. Uh, South of River Road to the north, and it's uh, we have a, we share a common boundary with the Sino Canal uh, to the south. Okay, all right, next slide. All right, so following that uh, phone conversation that I had with Brian the uh, previous fall, is that we got in touch with uh, various members uh, and orchestrated a field tour. Uh, for McKee Shears that following February. So uh, we met at a, we were able to uh, secure a meeting place in Poolsville. We met at the town hall. And I remember it was kind of a screwy day in February because we had a combination of rain, we had snow. I mean, it couldn't have been an absolutely worse day. But Linda, if you remember, uh, we had a pretty good turnout. Good turnout. We, we had a number of uh, local RGS members there. We had Wildlife and Heritage Service staff. We had a good cross section of our staff at that meeting. Uh, so we toured the wildlife management area, looked at potential sites, uh, kind of got an overview of the habitat there, and kind of zeroed in maybe on um, some sections, a particular site or sites that we might be able to do some habitat manipulation on to really benefit um, woodcock. Um, go ahead then. We entered into a following that meeting in February. Within uh, there's some administrative work. We felt that it would be beneficial to enter into a memorandum of agreement between the Rough Grass Society and the Wildlife and Heritage Service. So that was completed in May of 2013. All right. So in June of 2013, then we held a, a planning meeting on site. Dave, if you were there that day, we had a number of members. We met there at the uh, at the Field Trial Pavilion off of Sycamore Landing Road, uh, just to kind of, you know, see what kind of resources that we could bring together in terms of uh, what we were interested in doing down there. And at that meeting, we basically identified a um, nine-acre site that we were interested in doing some habitat manipulation on. Essentially, what we were keying in on, it was creating that, that early successional habitat that woodcock are attracted to. And for those of you that are familiar with McKeeba Shears, and for those of you that are not, we've got, it's, 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 it's a really unique area. We've, we've got a combination of habitats down there. We've got, uh, we have forested bottomlands, we have agricultural fields, we've got green tree reservoirs, but we also have an extensive network of hedgerows that border these agricultural fields that have really been down there for 25, 30, maybe even more years. And in terms of providing, let's say, good, diverse wildlife habitat, they've really lost that overall benefit. So we felt kind of the thinking was, well, look, if we could key in on some of these hedgerows and do some habitat manipulation there, alter the vegetative cover, we felt that by doing that over a period of time that we could make these areas this, uh, that we're working on more attractive to woodcock. All right, so we did. So we identified a nine-acre site to undergo habitat manipulation at McKee. Okay, go ahead. All right, now the site that we keyed in on. Let me. I'll step over here just to show you. Um, 
just to kind of give you kind of where we are, here there is River Road to the top. Sycamore Landing Road um, runs right through the management area. Uh, many of you in the room here are probably familiar with McKee because you, this is our dog training area over here. This is the field trial pavilion, which would sit over here. And this is the area that we keyed in on. We've got, we've got about three hedgerow areas there. We've got some fallow fields uh, uh, on alternate sides of those. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, there we go, yeah. And the plan was, was to come in here and to basically is to do some habitat manipulation in this site, okay? So the plan was, well look, you know, it's kind of a multi-stage process is, is to go in there and to um, alter the structure of those hedgerows. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide there at this point and we can bump ahead. All right, so it's kind of a, it's, it's a, it's a multi-stage uh, process that we mapped out to do this habitat modification. We came in in July of 2013, and our first step was to clear those hedgerows that we had identified, to clear those as much as we could uh, using mechanical means of the understory vegetation. Go ahead. All right, so we basically went in there. This is a rented, I believe that we rented a, uh, this bobcat, we, we had an ambush chopper. And I've got to say that in terms of partnering, this is that, is that in working with Dave and Linda, is that they were able to come up with, with, with funds, let's say for, for the equipment rental uh, to help us achieve this goal down there at McKee. Okay, go ahead, next slide. All right, um, so th I think we spent about a week, Dave. Wasn't it about a week? It was about a week and we had, it was really re remarkable the, the amount of work that was accomplished using this bobcat and that ambush chopper in terms of really, I mean, doing an excellent job of clearing the understory out in those hedgerows. And I think probably in about a week that work was done. Okay? All right. So the next step in that process is that after the understory had been cleared, we had this overstory of trees that we felt necessary that we, we wanted to remove. Because looking at that and creating that early successional habitat, we wanted to open that, uh, completely open that understory as much as possible. We're interested in removing those trees because as you see in a moment, we were looking then at coming back uh, and doing a uh, tree planting operation. Is to, is to create the shrub understory that we felt would be much more beneficial to Woodcock. So in September 2013, we had a, a I guess you'd call it a field day, but it was, it, it was an effort, it was a combined effort of, uh, once again, the RGS chapter members as well as uh, Wildlife and Heritage Service staff. Go ahead, Jonathan, next slide. And what we did was we performed a, a hat and squirt, a hat and squirt technique. And Mike, you can see there you go. You're famous here. But what we did was we went through, we went through that understory, and you can see those trees there. And where we had trees, either using uh, using a hatchet <clears throat> or a machete, just to go ahead and whack like around three slices, you know, th uh, through the bark into the cambium layer of that tree. And go ahead, next slide. And we applied a herbicide and. Uh, Bob, what was the name of that? That do you remember what we used? Some, what was it again? Okay, because there was a question earlier what, what we used there. Okay, Arsenal. That's kind of the that's the trade name. Okay, good. All right, all right. So then, as we had we had a team of people that were going through and just kind of you know whacking trees that you know they were doing hacking and then we had we had staff going through and squirting the herbicide you know, into the cuts. Uh, go ahead, next slide. And you can see there, you can see there, you know, just it, really that's all it took was, was just a couple of cuts and down here. Not too deep, just so you got through the bark and into that cambium layer, it seemed to work. And then go ahead, next slide. All right, and then you can see there that the, that the herbicide's been applied, okay, at that point in time. So you don't have to go all the way around the entire circumference. Correct. It's not like you had to girdle the tree. Three sides, boom. Right. Okay. You just, you know, it's like three hacks, you know, boom. it was like three wax and boom, spray it, and that's it. So. Usually, uh, it, usually I mean, you put it in like one every like four inches or something like that around the circumference. Usually, Arsenal is probably a little more potent. 
Mm -hmm. like our lawn around us. Usually it's about a half for every four inches. Right. And then you see a saw on those two, you know, <coughs> when, when our volunteers are instructed on how to do it, they have below and then <laughs> there's a difference and then up above. Right. So to get anything that the, the double sort of. Right, just to make sure that, you know, that the chemical was, was transported right up. So this is just another, this is, this is just another shot of, of the, uh, you know, of staff out there that day, um, you know, both, uh, you know, the RGS members as well as our staff, you know, doing hack and squirt. So then, um, kind of jumping ahead, uh, April of 2014, this, is, this was another stage in this process that we had discussed at, at, uh, at the initial planning meeting was that we had scheduled another field day and um, we planted approximately 9,500 tree seedlings, okay? We were out there on a Saturday, I believe, right? Okay, Jonathan, next slide. Yeah, and it was a combination of, uh, we were out there for the, uh, for, for the fallow field day areas that were gonna be planted. We had, our, we had our tractor, we had a tree planter out there that day. Um, and we had a whole grid. It was I don't have a slide of that, but it was it was organized in terms of how we of how we did the planting, and we were planting um, alders, we were planting dogwood, as well as uh, as well as some some cedars, and we kind of had this this block where we were alternating groups of seedlings and the planting. And as you can see here, uh, within the hedgerows themselves, we were using just a, a tree planting bar, okay, you know, going along and just you know, opening up the soil where we could and just putting the seedling down in there. Okay, next slide. And this is, this is just another slide um, of the tree planting there. But you can see though, you know, notice the, uh, uh, you can see how open everything is there at, at this point in time. So, you know, the mechanical work that was done having that uh, ambush chopper in there really did an excellent job of opening up that understory as you can see there, okay? And then this is the result uh, uh, months later that we've got, at least with the alders for the times I've been down there, that we've seen some really excellent, you know, excellent germination by the alders. Next slide, just uh, took me a little while to find some of the, you know, to, you know, to find the dogwood down there that had come up. They're, uh, they were a little more difficult to locate in the end of the story. Okay. So that was in April, September of 2014, last September, that uh, just to kind of just to kind of give those uh, seedlings a better start, uh, there were a number of us that went back down there and we did some, uh, I'd call it a, sp a spot treatment, spot herbicide treatment of the multiflora rose clumps in the autumn olive uh, that we still had in the end of the story. Jonathan, next slide. Okay, and you can see here, um, notice here that this is, all right, this is September, and this is a good indication. You can see how, how the effects of the hack and squirt really did a number on all those standing trees. I mean, I, it was almost like that we got probably better than a 90% kill. But then at the same time, we've got, you can see this uh, competition from a whole host of herbaceous uh, understory here. And in that, we've got, we had the clumps of, of rose and autumn olive. So we were, we were going in there and just, and just spraying uh, the olive and the rose. Go ahead, next slide. There we go. And just to give you an indication of, of, uh, of uh, what we're dealing with, some of the stems, the autumn olive stems, some were small, some were quite large. And then next slide. Uh, basically, this is uh, this is a, a follow-up visit to the site, and uh, you know this is the effect of the herbicide treatment on one site where we had uh, multiflora rose. And, and at this point, then, our, you know what our interest is doing, just kind of as a postscript to this is that we're interested in keeping this momentum going and looking ahead from, a, from at least a planning standpoint is to expand kind of this same process and, and to make some of that application on other hedgerow sites on the McKee Bishop's Wildlife Management Area. 